thank you for doing this. Oh, I'm happy to do it. Yeah. And uh, maybe to start with, with where you come from or, or where you work kind of started into the course you are working now, as I understand. Yeah. And, and you come from, from Silicon Valley, from the uh, technological world. Yeah. And, and uh, what, what was the impulse then to, to move into something like um, sense space? Like what, what did you, a uh, service space, sorry. But what's the impulse to, to move into that direction? Well, I think I grew up in the Silicon Valley. And in the Silicon Valley, there's just, there's a certain kind of story that you do big things, you do things very fast, you try to be innovative. Um, and there's also a lot of greed that comes with that. And so there were multiple narratives at play. Some of it was good. It was creativity, enthusiasm, energy. But you know, the greed, the self-centeredness, uh, even some of the speed, like it, that didn't land uh, with me. And so I said, hey, can we do something out of the box? Can we do something a little different? And so we went to a homeless shelter mm -hmm. in 1999, way back then, mm -hmm. when the world didn't even know about internet. And we went to a homeless shelter and we said, hey, can we help you? Can we build a website, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, we ended up building them a website, and that was our first project. Um, mm -hmm. But underneath it, and we built thousands of websites for nonprofits in the years to, that followed. But underneath that, uh, I would say there was this impulse to be generous, mm -hmm. to give with no strings attached, to serve. And, and so we would do, we started with building websites for nonprofits, but then we would just do so many other projects. Um, and it wasn't so much about the project, but it was more about the spirit of service. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's, that's powerful. And is there, is there a kind of from your, from your upbringing or from your, I mean, you are from India and from that, from that culture or from your family, this kind of, uh, you know, could you say, uh, impulse to the generosity that was planted there or, or how do you see I mean, that? Yeah, it could have been partly cultural, but I don't think it was just cultural because I'm not so sure uh, that it's like baked into us as we grow because the dominant paradigm narrative is you go to school and then you get good grades, you go to a good college and after college you go get a job and then you get promotions or you mm -hmm. do a startup if you're in the Silicon Valley. <laughs> And it's like just on and on and on, you know, and you get nice house, big car, I mean, you know, big house, nice cars, that kind of thing. Um, so I think that was a story that I grew up with, but I just realized that there was a billboard once that I saw. It says, he who dies with the most toys mm -hmm. still dies. Mm -hmm. And I think those kinds of things appeal to me because I was like, well, what's the point of all this? You mm -hmm. achieve a little success. You, you, uh, you know, you, you gain a few things and you might have a lot in your pocket, but is it really about accumulation or is mm -hmm. it more about circulation? Mm -hmm. um, and I think for me, I realized that it was more about circulation. That mm -hmm. made me happy. Mm -hmm. That connected me to not just other people, but life. Mm -hmm. And when you're connected to life, I think uh, you feel nourished. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't need to go to the mall to go <laughs> buy stuff to make you feel good. You're like... Look, I mean, like, look at this, you know, like, hey, who would have thought here I am with sitting with Mike under a tree in Salzburg <laughs> and on a beautiful evening. Yeah. And it's just like, you can't predict this stuff, you know, mm. and you're just like, thank you, life. Thank mm. you for being sacred. But you need to have that. And if you're so obsessed with trying to accumulate and gather, you forget to kind of land in the moment. Mm. Um, and so I don't think it was, it was my culture as such i think it was more of an inner pulling i had mm -hmm. in fact it was very much opposite to the culture um mm -hmm. that that really got me uh that made me question and i came to my own conclusions uh with some experiments you know mm -hmm. yeah and and how how did your your understanding and your experience of of generosity and and this kind of impulse impulse of of giving yeah. has has evolved or has has widened in that in that time that you are working with this and, and bringing this into the world. Well, I think initially I would have 
said, there's a beautiful quote by Rachel Naomi Remen, who says, when you help, you see life is weak. Mm -hmm. When you fix, you see life is broken. Uh, when you serve, you see life as a co-creative whole. And I really like that quote because it's like, I think initially that speaks a lot to the journey. You know, initially mm -hmm. you're trying to help and you're trying to fix the problems of the world. And then as you mature, you're like, wow, so many people have come and gone. They've all tried to fix things. And it seems like for every bridge you build, you're burning, you know, two other bridges and you're just not aware of it. Mm -hmm. And so you're all, we're always behind in terms of progress. You know, in fact, you can make a case that we're actually getting worse off now than we were before. We're mm -hmm. disconnected with ourselves. We're disconnected with this, uh, with each other. And we're disconnected with the systems like nature. Mm -hmm. Um, and so you're like, okay, instead of helping and fixing, maybe I try serving that maybe there is a deeper connection there. And then as I started serving, I realized that actually I was getting so much when mm -hmm. I was like, I could give an inch and I was getting a foot in return. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I just felt gratitude mm -hmm. that I had a chance to give, mm -hmm. that I had a chance to make an offering. Um, so I would say that I even moved from serving to offering. Um, and that has been... That has been a remarkable journey for me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And and you also speak about this this moving from me to we to us. Do you feel that is also a kind of uh, this journey of of you know from from uh, service from you know from fixing and, and helping and and serving and and um, offering that this is also a kind of journey to widen one's sense of of yeah. identity or belonging yeah um i i think it's not only to widen one's sense sense of belonging but it's also to expand one's sense of identity mm -hmm. so i think when you move from me to we to us you're not only connecting with life in a deeper way but it's actually reshaping your identity mm -hmm. So in the me, the identity is very small. In the we, the identity starts to include others around you. And in the us, the identity almost starts to dissolve, you know. Um, and that decentering of the self, usually our self is right in the center of everything around our, in our orbit. Mm -hmm. But if you decenter that self a little bit, I think it's a very powerful uh, process of dissolution uh but not in a way that's like oh my god like i've lost who i am you actually gain who you could have been mm -hmm. and that is this deep communion with all life mm -hmm. like <laughs> you know like it's a beautiful thing yeah uh, so it's almost like it's an opportunity um to grow in this way and i and i think we have to it doesn't mean you discount the me mm -hmm. i think you have to take care of the me Mm -hmm. uh, I think it doesn't mean you say, oh, we, like, creates an in circle and an out circle, yeah. so let's not do the we. I think we is also beautiful. We all have a we in our families, you know, in our mm -hmm. loved ones. Um, but it is to say that there's something beyond all those boundaries. Mm -hmm. As Rumi would say, there's a field beyond wrongdoing and right doing. I'll meet you there. Mm -hmm. And that, I think, has a, has a, has a powerful... Um, uh, unfolding. I think there's a potency, there's mm -hmm. a possibility there uh, that could be unlocked more uh, than we do currently in mm -hmm. the dominant paradigm. Mm -hmm. And and you also you know connected with, with a service space and other projects. You also connect people to, or as I understand, also to enable them, empower them to 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 connect in that in that spirit. Yeah. How do you feel that this is, um, why is this particularly relevant in, in our time to, you know, to meet them? There are many challenges we are, we are in to, yeah. to, you know, to respond in a, in a different way. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I, I think we usually, when we think of connection, we think of it as one to many, mm -hmm. right? That we, I, I am here. And I'm going to connect with you, I'm going to connect with you, and we sort of count it that way. 
but I think it can go a lot deeper. I think it can go uh, to a many to many kind of connection, mm -hmm. which means if you have a circle of, you know, 10 people, it's not just that you can connect with 10 people, but like the other nine can, people can connect with each other too. Mm -hmm. And if you look at it in that way, I think it's like a mind blowing possibility of what collective emergence looks like. Mm -hmm. And I think, uh, you know, I think of it as the movement from TV to telephone to internet. Mm -hmm. TV was broadcast one to many. Telephone was one to one. And internet is a group forming network, which is many to many. Mm -hmm. So how can we apply many to many kind of organizing? We have done it for profit. Mm -hmm. We have done it for protest which is greed and anger, but we have not done enough of it for compassion. Mm -hmm. And the reason why compassion, connecting many to many networks around compassion is particularly powerful is because it is aligned with our true natures, because our true nature is many to many. Mm -hmm. right? It's not one to one. If the sages are to be trusted, they say, look, there is no one home. Mm -hmm. that we have a construct of an eye but that's a temporary construct it's like constantly changing mm -hmm. so there is no static self in the first place mm -hmm. so to really like so it has always been many to many internally mm -hmm. it has always been many to many at a spiritual level now if at a systemic level we can design at a many to many level then we can have a deep uh, alignment of uh, inner and outer in some sense, and that I think can be very regenerative. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't think we have gotten there yet. But mm -hmm. we will. <laughs> you know, it took us five thousand yeah. years to put <laughs> wheels on bags. It's, you know, it's such a simple idea, but it's mm -hmm. like, why don't we do it? You know, and so I hope we will. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. and we certainly service space is experimenting with it, mm -hmm. um, and I hope more people do. Mm -hmm. And you have, you speak a lot about emergence and this trust in emergence. Yeah. And I, I really like that, and uh, because it also puts a whole different sense on, you know, your own actions or what, what you know, there yeah, also is a measurement, I do this and then I become that, what I think what you also mentioned with the transactional, and the emergence is kind of more trusting the whole of life to, to you know, for something to, to emerge or to form itself yeah. as a response. How, how do you understand that? Emergence and why is that so important for you? I think emergence is what happens when one plus one is more than two, mm -hmm. which means that the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. Mm -hmm. So it's not just what you have and what I have, it's that when you and I come together and we can synergize and you can say, okay, I'll be the interviewer and I'll be the speaker. And there's a kind of synergy. But beyond synergy is a sort of emergence where we both start to do things and a whole new property starts to emerge. Mm -hmm. That, like the example I love is just very simple one of water, right? Hydrogen mm -hmm. and oxygen atoms don't actually know what water is, but when mm -hmm. they come together in a certain way, it creates a whole new property mm -hmm. of water. Mm -hmm. And so the question is, how can we come together in a way that awakens this water? Can we go into that deep a connection? Mm -hmm. And if we stay transactional, we can never actually get there. Mm -hmm. But if we can go from transaction to applying generosity and being, widening the circles of reciprocity, Mm -hmm. That if I give to you, you may not give back to me, but you'll give to somebody else, mm -hmm. and that somebody else is part of my field of love. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so if you think in that way, uh, you, you know, I think a, a whole new field of possibility o opens up. Mm -hmm. And humanity right now is at a ceiling mm -hmm. of what all it can, it's not able to respond to the challenges of the times across all sectors. Yeah. So you say, well, how in the world are we going to respond? And I think it's an invitation for us to step into a field of emergence. 
to learn to relate, if we just transact, 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 it will take us further and it'll narrower, bring us narrower and narrower and narrower, and it'll disconnect us further and further and further. But instead of transacting, if we start relating in deeper and deeper ways, mm -hmm. and not just relating for utilitarian purposes, but relating for the purpose of, of deep connection, um, I think it can open up water. <laughs> mm -hmm. I think it can nourish us. Mm -hmm. yeah. And what do you think is a, uh, well, in your experience, what, because it all sounds, you know, great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but but how, how do you do it? I mean, what, what, what is the, what is the way to, for oneself to move into that, into that direction? Because there are also all kinds of internal and, you know, outside, uh, you know, impulses or, or, or you know, in interests, uh, um, you know, you could say against that or kind of in the way. Well, how do you, how do you see that? Um, yeah, it's true that, like, what is the minimum elegant step we can do mm -hmm. to ignite a field of emergence when the whole world seems to be totally against that, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, or at least the dominant paradigm is like very, very, very transactional, let alone expanding your circle of reciprocity wide enough that you have these deep relationships and you enge you open up a field of emergence. Seems like, wow. <laughs> but I think there's a very surprisingly simple through line mm -hmm. from here, wherever that here is, whether it's in the me or the we or the us, from here to that field of emergence. And that through line runs through kindness. Mm. the smallest act of kindness allows us to go from here to there in the sense that when I am when I am in my situation and maybe I have to work I can't do all these other things I don't have time but if I can take just one moment out of my day mm. to hold open that one door we tend to think oh that's so small no mm -hmm. one's going to give you a Nobel Prize for that right but you yes. just did that but when you do that there is an external ripple effect, but there's also an internal ripple effect. Mm -hmm. So what happens inside you is that you start to move from me and mine. I need to get to my office and this door is in the way. I'm going to open it. Instead, for that brief moment, you're actually thinking going from me to we. Mm -hmm. You're saying his need is actually my need as well. Mm -hmm. And my capacities to fulfill his need is actually my opportunity as well. Mm -hmm. And so I hold open the door for you. I'm moving from me to we. And as I'm moving from me to we, you're actually opening yourself up to create a really rich relationship. Mm -hmm. And it may not immediately materialize with this person or that person, but you're putting forth the organizing principles of connecting mm -hmm. around kindness, mm -hmm. not self-benefit. And when you put that organizing principle together, over time, you start to have deeper relationships. And as you have deeper relationships, you start to have synergy. And mm -hmm. as you have synergy, you ultimately get to a point where the whole is greater than the sum of the parts, which is emergence. You start to evoke like newer and newer properties. Mm. And you are saying, this is, this is so, how do you say, fulfilling or so, um, you know, pulling. Because that is, that is our human nature or our deepest kind of, you know, oneness with life. That I mean, what you were saying, as I hear you, is that this kind of deeper relationships have a, have such a, you know, value, <laughs> yeah. such a joy or such a, you know, fulfillment in themselves that that they become a kind of attractor of, <laughs> yeah. of of where to go. Or, yeah, I mean, I think there's a way to actually go through life while leading with relationships. Mm -hmm. instead of transactions. Most of us go through life w while leading with transactions, but I think there's actually a very legitimate, and I would say not only legitimate, far more satisfying, and I would even stretch that to say far more effective as an agent of service for the world. If that's your thing, this is actually way more effective to lead with relationship mm -hmm. as we navigate this thing called life. Mm -hmm. So I think it's 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 possible and, and, and very, very effective.
um, if we lead in this way. We don't have enough stories and narratives that make us think that, oh, that's going to work in that way. Uh, but actually, I think in the larger arithmetic, in the longer arc of time, mm -hmm. I, I, I would say that uh, we, it would show us otherwise. Mm -hmm. uh, and how do you see that in the, in the kind of, there's a lot in the, in the social field, also a lot of polarization and kind of, a kind yeah. of uh, you know, the social fabric. I mean, here in Germany, but also in the States, there's a lot of uh, yeah. fracture or rupture or something. Yeah. And, and how do you see that, that vision or that reality? Yeah, that 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 you're speaking about in that in that context. Yeah, I mean, I, I think there's a tremendous amount of polarization in the world today. I mean, it might even be unprecedented in the level at which we have fractured social fabric of society mm -hmm. is actually quite tragic, uh, and a lot of it has been unintended consequences of technologies like social network. Mm -hmm. But there's actually so many other factors as well that go into it. Now, when you say we should build bridges across differences, that sounds good, right? Mm -hmm. But you can't talk about building bridges without ha learning what drawing compassionate boundaries is all about, right? Mm -hmm. Or rather, drawing healthy boundaries, right? Drawing boundaries that allow you to be safe first. And then, if it's just that one step beyond to say, look, I don't just want to stay in my bubble of convenience. I want to reach out and connect with somebody who feels different than me, who looks different than me, who thinks different than me, who votes for a different party than me. Mm -hmm. To say that, yeah, you, you think differently than I do. Your body might be different than I, mine. But you know what? We are connected by heart. Mm -hmm. So if we can shift from head and hands to heart, And it's not to renounce the head and hands, mm -hmm. it is that, but it is to lead with the heart. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then I think you get to this point that we are universal first and unique second. Mm -hmm. Right now, we are unique first yeah. and universal maybe second, you know, and that's who maybe, right? Mm -hmm. But I think if we get to a point where we are universal first and, and then unique, That changes the whole game of how we can build bridges. So it doesn't mean you don't draw boundaries. You draw boundaries. Com most compassionate people, the research shows that compassionate people draw healthy boundaries. Mm -hmm. They're very good at that, right? It's the empathetic people that are not very good at that. But compassionate people are actually very good at drawing boundaries. And sometimes you need to draw boundaries. But how do you draw the boundaries? Mm -hmm. You don't say no. You just say not now. Mm -hmm. Not now is very different than no, mm -hmm. right? And if mm -hmm. you say not now, and then you build yourself up, and once you build yourself up, then you say, oh, I'm going to lead with heart. We are universal first. That's what binds us together. Mm -hmm. So I, I think that's how we ultimately, we, we have to come to the, mm -hmm. that safety for the eye, and then to be a bit gutsy, step out of our circle of convenience, and to say, oh, Even if, you're, even if you think differently and even if your material appearances are different than mine, our heart still beats as one, mm. you know? And I think it's possible to lead in that way. Mm -hmm. yeah. And what makes, you, what makes you hopeful that this is possible to, to, you know, for us as human beings to move in that direction? Because sometimes it's kind of look like, Jesus, how should we, how should we do this? Yeah. How should we come to that more... Deeper, deeper recognition, you know, like with what is happening in the world and, 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 you know, the kind of conflict that is there. You know, there was a press journalist that once <laughs> asked me, she says, yeah, this kind of stuff, you think it'll, it really works? Like, you know, I like kind of skeptical. And I was like, look, forget this interview. Go out. And this was in India. And she had taken the bus to, uh, you know, for our meeting. I said, go out and buy a box of sweets in india we buy these sweets you know all the time and give a box of sweets to the bus driver and say thank you for mm -hmm. something positive that he has done right that or is doing then or if you know him like has done in the past and see what happens mm. so she still interviewed me <laughs> but she actually went out and did that and her story opened with that mm. 
So what gives me hope is that this is not market funded. This is not like, mm -hmm. it, it, it is not a popularity context. It is nature funded. Mm -hmm. That you will respond to generosity with greater generosity because you are wired to care. Mm -hmm. Because your body immediately releases oxytocin and dopamine and serotonin and endorphins. And it does that because this is nature funded. Mm -hmm. So what gives me hope is that transaction is just market funded. Mm -hmm. It's a small part of life. Mm -hmm. But, you know, love, kindness, compassion, generosity is nature funded. Mm. And I have much more faith in nature than I do in the markets. Mm -hmm. And do you also see that that's beautiful? When you talk about gen synergy, there's also a way in which differences or also, you know, differences that can sometimes, sometimes be conflicting can be still held in that in that sense of, of connectedness so you can the difference doesn't need to become something to uh, you know avoid uh, a kind of a, a you know separation but yeah. can also enhance the synergy or how do you see that oh i, I mean absolutely it's like you, you look at a palm of your fingers you know it's not they're not all five same fingers mm -hmm. And it's actually, we're a lot stronger because we have the thumb that looks like a thumb and we have the index finger that's like the index finger. So, you know, I, I think there's that at a, at a basic level uh, to just say that, you know, there is strength to diversity for sure. Uh, but I think at a subtler level, Rumi's quote really comes to mind. He says, beyond the field, here we are in this beautiful field, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. Beyond the field of wrongdoing and right doing, mm -hmm. or rather, he says, no, not beyond the field. Beyond wrongdoing and right doing, there is a field. I will meet you there. Mm -hmm. And so, I think the invitation is for us to step into that field. Mm -hmm. It's not just that we are different, but that our algorithm for identifying with things that are necessarily different mm -hmm. is not the deepest algorithm for what it means to be alive. Mm -hmm. That if I identify as a brown person and I, you identify as a white person, you can say I'm a brown person, you can say you're a white person, but we're also much more than that. Mm -hmm. You can say you're left-wing progressive person and maybe I'm right-wing, you know, kind of a, uh, have those right-wing political beliefs. But there's a deeper story mm -hmm. underneath it. And so I think whenever we are polarized, it's like Einstein said, the problems cannot be solved at the level of consciousness that created it. Mm -hmm. So I think we are seeing this polarity because all this stuff was in our shadows mm -hmm. and social media amplified it. And so now it's out in the open. And I think the only way to actually elevate this whole dialogue will be to, uh, to step into a newer consciousness, a mm -hmm. deeper consciousness, a vaster consciousness. Mm -hmm. and, you, and you also speak about that consciousness being you know, so deeply rooted in, in compassion, which you say is, you know, I like what you said, that it is different from empathy and 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 yeah. and, and could you could you yeah, could you speak to that how you see compassion as such a as such a powerful force to you know to move us in that in that direction uh you know i would lean on the buddha who did a lot of research on this he investigated mm -hmm. who he was all the way down to his core essence and he says there's There, it comes down to four Brahma Viharas, these four homes mm -hmm. of what makes us who we are, our true essence. You know, and one of those is compassion. Mm -hmm. Right? Compassion, equanimity, um, loving kindness, um, and and sympathetic joy. And when you look at compassion, particularly, is 
is just this inexhaustible virtue. We don't need to go create it. Mm -hmm. It's there. We just need to discover it. Mm -hmm. So compassion, I do think, is at the core. And I think the arc of all our, you know, to paraphrase uh, Martin Luther King Jr., you know, I think the arc of all our left turns and right turns ultimately lands at compassion. Mm -hmm. So I, I believe that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, beautiful. And you also spoke about um, this this um, this difference between content and, and context in the way we, you know, we are with with each other, and also how relationships. Are built it and and how we how we even see ourselves you know as, as human beings can can you speak to that yeah um, I, I think in a transactional world we tend to reduce people to content mm -hmm. that who are you are you just your thoughts when I meet you mm -hmm. right am I am I are, am I just meeting your thoughts am I just meeting what you say, how you think, how you, even how you behave, how those thoughts translate into action, are you much more than that? Mm -hmm. And I, I, I think, I think we're much more than that. Mm -hmm. And I don't think we can, I think you have to honor the context around things. I was in India one time and this woman gifted me a bag of trashed pencils. Mm-hmm. She was a janitor, and she says, "I wanna, uh, I I wanna help others too. What can I do?" And she learned the story of Gandhi, who, who was looking in his whole ashram for a small little pencil. Mm -hmm. And everyone's like, "Your father of the nation? What are you doing? Small pencil? Here's a dozen." You know, he's like, "No, I want that one. Why? Why, why are you looking for that one?" It's because a small a, a girl gave it to me with a lot of love. Mm -hmm. And so this woman collected these small pencils as a janitor in a school, and she gifted me these pencils. Mm. And it was so powerful. When I held that pencil, it moved me to tears because I was like, am I holding the pencil or am I holding the wrapping around the pencil? Mm -hmm. And I think this is true of the context. Are you hold, holding the content or are you actually holding the... Is, is the content... If it's... If we... If we are blind to context, mm -hmm. then we just see the content, and it, it's a very flat. It's it's not alive. Mm -hmm. But if we're able to hold the content in this larger context, with this animated context that we are in a dynamic co-creative relationship with, mm -hmm. then this content comes alive in a way that it wouldn't have without that context. Mm -hmm. With context, you mean the whole, the whole, your know, field of relationship and experience and, and kind of, you know, ancestry or the whole field of life that, you know, that each of us also represents or, or is in, in ourselves and, and, and yeah, a person or even a situation or. Yeah. I, I think it's open to interpretation, but I would say the depth of context is directly proportional to the awareness of the observer. Mm -hmm. right. So if you have the capacity to how much are you willing to hold, you can take a small grain of rice and you can mm -hmm. say, this is my meal today. Or you can be grateful for like the dozen hands that would have that it would have taken for that grain of rice to fall, to come into your plate. Mm -hmm. And initially it feels like, well, you know, like, let me just get through with this meal. Like, what's <laughs> the point? I'm going to look at all of this. But as you start to do that, as you start to soften your gaze and even deepen your gaze, you just, that becomes the default. Mm -hmm. And when that becomes the default, it's very hard to be transactional with somebody because they're not just their content. Mm -hmm. And you realize, even if someone comes and says something bad to you and you're hurt by it, you realize that, well, why are they saying something bad to me? Mm -hmm. Because hurt people hurt people. Mm -hmm. So somebody wounded them, and they are paying forward that wound to you. 
but you're able to separate the action from the person. Mm -hmm. So you're just able to say, oh, that's your actions, but actually I love you. So I will resist that action. That's not a good action, but I'm not going to hate you mm -hmm. because you are much more than that action. You are much more than that thought. You are much more than that reaction that you might have had in that moment. Mm -hmm. So I think context is what allows us is this practice of seeing the context initially even if it's intellectual it can you know it can have benefit mm -hmm. but over time it's not even intellectual you just start to see the deep interconnections mm -hmm. that allow for the present moment to be in front of you mm -hmm. and when you see that deep interconnection you have nothing but gratitude because mm -hmm. you're like wow how in the world did all of existence conspire to have this person in front of me offer this thing to me mm -hmm. like you can't you would feel like bowing all the time you're like oh my mm -hmm. god and then you and it would be so much you would be like what did i do to deserve it's the opposite of narcissism where you have yeah. this entitlement that i did this and this is owed to me mm -hmm. in fact i need even more mm -hmm. right like and then you negotiate for more like i want more 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 this is like oh my god even without <laughs> negotiating i'm receiving a gold mine mm -hmm. And you're like, no, no, thank you. Thank you. Oh, my God. Like, you just feel like dropping down on your knees and bowing in gratitude mm -hmm. for all this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, I found interesting also how you, you know, you spoke about even, you know, how, how also this technological advances with ChatGPT and, and AI yeah. are challenging are kind of contributing to the challenge of of content <laughs> that yeah. we can create i mean in this in this in this area that we can create content like yeah like written content or intellectual content in a in, a, in this incredible scale and, and and you know do things with it and how and you are you know it kind of goes back to the beginning it is, this is happening a lot in silicon valley this yeah. kind of wow what are the opportunities there or what are the dangers and 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 how you really see that that technological challenge? You also said you want to use it as a or, or kind of infuse it with compassion. Even can can you say to that how you how you see you know also this this rises of of technology that change our way of how we interact also with you know with with information or yeah. you know, ideas and um, what you know what this challenges us to. Yeah, I, th I think if our connection is just rooted in language and and all the derivatives of that language, then I think uh, we are going to be outsourced. Mm -hmm. But is our connection just rooted in language? Because now machines can talk to us and can generate as intelligent and, and, and all the things, right? Like whether it's books, images, you know, music, Uh, all the different things that uh, emerge from that field, um, machines can do. But I think it invites us to a much deeper question. What mm -hmm. can we do as humans that machines cannot do? Mm -hmm. So I think the Dalai Lama once said, you know, technology can greatly assist human ability, but it cannot produce compassion. Mm -hmm. So I think... I think it's kind of awesome <laughs> that, like, wow, I'm from the Silicon Valley. I keep <laughs> up with it. We have our, launched our own Compassion GPT. Um, and we're playing in that field to see what we can do, to see mm -hmm. if we can alter the arc of, like, the traditional extractive models into something a little deeper. But I think underneath that, I think we will have a choice. Whether do we want to go to the metaverse Mm -hmm. And say, look, we're so polarized and people are so complicated. And, and if you over-identify with just your five senses and thought, it, it creates that kind of tension. And then you say, look, I just want to be in my own virtual world mm -hmm. where I create the kind of people I want to, where I create the kind of content I want to be around. But is that going to be more satisfying or going instead of that metaverse, can we go to the metaverse, right? Which is the M-E-T-T-A. Mm -hmm. <laughs> which is a poly word for loving kindness, right? Mm -hmm. Where I soften my gaze and I say, okay, maybe I don't get along so well with this person, but can it actually uh, open up 
into a deeper connection, a synergistic connection, a field of emergence? Am I willing to risk that, all the challenges that come with that, mm -hmm. for the potential of emergence? And I think if we see that clearly, it's a no-brainer. Mm -hmm. right? Because on one side, you're getting going from isolation to even more isolation. Yeah. And it seems like a short-term win, but it's actually just continued isolation. It's just a, it's, it's just a cheaper way to live. Mm -hmm. Whereas this is saying, wow, you know, even if people are complicated, you can actually lean into that. And if you do, you might evoke this metaverse, which is a loving kindness source, which is something that can emerge in, be in the field between you and I, right? Mm -hmm. In any relationship with, between any living beings. Mm -hmm. And how do you see that with, with ChatGPT? I and mean, I was, you know, also trying a bit, and, <laughs> and you get this kind of messages, and it can appear that you're actually talking to to someone. Yeah. <laughs> But it is a something. It is still a machine. Yeah. And I feel also that certain things, like a real, you know, how you say, a real painting and a real poem, uh, you know, coming from the heart, is also different in quality than a, you know, that comes from a, from a GPU, <laughs> from a chat GPT, or do you think this is a kind of a yeah, <laughs> holding on to the past? <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, at the level of art, they've done research on this, like box symphonies, you're an expert in music, and they'll give you an AI-generated symphony and a box symphony, you won't be able to tell. Mm -hmm. uh, except that this thing can crank out like hundreds and hundreds of them <laughs> overnight, so it's just like made all of that irrelevant. But I think the larger question you're asking is, did Bach just create the symphony or was there context around it? Mm. Was that just his pencil, but was there love wrapped around it? Mm -hmm. Was that his gift and there was wrapping around it and we've lost touch with the wrapping? So I think it begs all these deeper questions. Mm -hmm. That what was the utility of that symphony? Was it just the music? Or was it something much more than that? And if the answer is it was much more than that, then I think AI will not be able to do all the mm -hmm. things human beings do. Mm -hmm. But if the answer is, oh, you just painted a man, you know, this style of painting, you just created this style of music, you just created this type style of a novel, all that is already outdated. Mm -hmm. Like that's <laughs> just if that's all you want. Please go to the metaverse. <laughs> You'll get that on spades, on demand, mm -hmm. for whatever thing you want, you know? But you're also saying that there's a certain quality of, of consciousness or, or a deeper knowing that is not content-based or not, not uh, you know, how do you say, content-based. A lot of this kind of artworks also come out of that yeah. consciousness of that, yeah. is a, that is speaking from intuition or from a deeper knowing that then expresses as, as something. And, yeah. and how do you see that that connection to to the to the deeper you know, sense of 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 being that this is now kind of yeah. challenging us to to ask this question: What is actually yeah. deeply, deeply human, meaningful for you? Yeah. yeah, that what is actually what what is the qualities that we can't that this kind of machines can't? Uh, yeah, <laughs> I mean, or, 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 I gave a talk in 2017 titled algorithms and intuition. Mm -hmm. So if you look at algorithms, they analyze large amounts of data and they make it simple for us to digest. That's the purpose of algorithms. If you look at intuition, it's actually doing the same thing, but instead of using the silicon apparatus, computer chips, it's using our carbon apparatus. Mm -hmm. So it is looking at big, massive amounts of big data all around us, right? And in every moment, we are s confronted with so much input, right? So much stimulus. And it is processing all of that, feeling it out, and actually giving us an intuition. Mm -hmm. But if we're out of touch with that intuition, then all we're left with is algorithms. Mm -hmm. So I think the question really is, how do we rekindle the power of intuition? Mm -hmm. And I think the current AI world invites us to step into that. Mm -hmm. And if we cannot collectively find an answer to that, then I'm afraid we're going to be outsourced. Mm -hmm. 
And do you see that intuition also connected to, to deeper values or what? Because it is also yeah. the question, you know, what, what do we actually want? You know, what, what kind of life do we actually want? That is yeah. what AI can't tell us. I mean, they can tell us, <laughs> can come up with answers that they generated from content. But, yeah. but this real question, I mean, you also alluded to this deep spiritual questions. You yeah. Know, yeah. Who, who am I or who, who oh, you had a different question <laughs> where am i yeah. where am i right so this this you know and and this there's also the sense that, that there's we have a deep spiritual yeah. root and and speaking to that you know kind of re rediscovering yeah that as as the source of our of our humanity and also you know where i mean that's where the compassion can come from mm. you know deeply and and yeah how you how do you see that um yeah, and in, in the in the in the face of these challenges, how 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 can we um, we rediscover this deeper deeper place of who we are? Or yeah, yeah. I mean, I I, I think I think this is a good question. <laughs> <laughs> I I think this is uh, this is why this is exciting for mm -hmm. for me in a way. A lot of people are afraid of AI, but I I I think it invites us to this question mm -hmm. that who are we? more deeply um, and what is you know like the smartest chess in the world is not played by a human but it's also not played by a computer mm -hmm. it's played by a hybrid mm -hmm. so how do we make use of our tools without becoming a tool of our tools you know right that's the risk that we now run is mm -hmm. that you know especially with all this computing capacity, all this incredible IQ that it has, better than all human beings. Um, but it's, it's not a, it, it can't do all forms of intelligence. It can only do IQ. Mm -hmm. So how will we take our intuitions and A, first become aware of it, but then also ask deeper questions of like, what exactly is intuition? And aren't there multiple forms of intuitions, multiple layers of intuitions? Is there good and bad intuition? Is everywhere you can justify anything with intuition. I yeah. felt like, oh, I was deeply guided to be take on to start this war. Mm -hmm. right. I mean, everybody would say that, you know, it's my intuition, man. I just had a feeling I was in my gut, you know. So how do you actually differentiate between all of these? And these are good questions to ask. And I mm -hmm. think it's. It's, we should have been asking them for, <laughs> for centuries, you know, mm -hmm. but now we have no choice but to ask them, mm -hmm. which I think is exciting. Mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> yeah, it's great that you can see this way because, you know, many people that are more interested in spirituality or this kind of things, there's a, or even culture, there's a, there's a fear on yeah. that, that it will take over and, and, and they are kind of, or we don't, will not, I, I uh, read this quote by Jaron Lanier who said we will not He's not fearing that the AI will kind of take over as a super intelligence, but that we as human beings will not understand each other anymore because yeah. because there is so much stuff, you know, so yeah. much information and content that is kind of and you don't really know is it true, is it not true? Yeah. So so what you are saying, what I hear you saying is we need a different basis of understanding yeah. each other that is not content based, yeah. <laughs> but yeah. it's actually on this deeper quality. Yeah. Right? And, and and you know maybe this is the time where humanity wakes up into a deeper consciousness that Einstein's been talking about. Mm -hmm. Maybe, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> <laughs> well, we keep serving, uh, you know, in in uh, with mm -hmm. that possibility in mind. And yeah, even if it doesn't get there, doesn't change anything. You still keep serving. Mm -hmm. So in a way, it's independent of the outcomes, but right. but maybe there's a chance that we would wake up into uh, that possibility. Mm -hmm. um, I think I think it's very possible, mm -hmm. and that also the challenges we face then as a as a human race are kind of you know mirroring mirroring and also pulling us to that mm -hmm. to that deeper to yeah. that deeper recognition. Right? Yeah, mm -hmm. it's it's almost like the future is calling us there. You know, right. Um, so, yeah. Thank you.